Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 28 of this 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. I'm doing this one with sunglasses because I'm out at the park and the sun is shining right in my face, so it's kind of blinding. Um, the uh, water fasting is still going pretty good. It's uh, not as good a day today as it was yesterday. I'm a little bit more tired. I was a bit sluggish this morning and kind of all throughout the day just felt a little bit lower energy um, mentally, emotionally, physically okay, but I just feel like, you know, I worked up, I worked till about 4 p.m. and I just felt like really burned out after that. <laughs> um, I was doing a bunch of planning work for a Conscious Growth Club, like figuring out next steps, and it was kind of different mental work than I've been doing the past several days, so it just seemed to burn me out a bit. Um, maybe I'll take tomorrow off, we'll see, but it could just be a fluke, you know, sometimes there's like up days and down days on the water fast, so I'll, I'll see. But otherwise, still going okay. Uh, because my energy is a bit lower, I want to talk about a really simple topic today, so I wanted to talk about this idea of life purpose as a, in, in a different way of thinking about it instead of like following your bliss or doing what you love. So there's this idea that your life purpose should be centered on doing what you love, following your heart, and that's one, that's one mindset, like do what you love, do what you enjoy. A different mindset, though, is to think of it from the opposite perspective, and sometimes this opposite perspective is more helpful for people who are getting a little stuck on the follow your bliss idea, and that is to actually uh, connect with your sorrow. So instead of thinking about what makes you blissful, think about what makes you sad. What, what do you feel is wrong with the world? What do you feel needs improvement? What really gets you in the depths of your soul? You know, what, what bothers you the most? And that can actually help you get more clarity about your life purpose, uh, especially for certain people, than the follow your bliss mindset. So with, uh, you know, with this model, instead of um, always thinking about the good, you actually go deeper into your sorrow. And there's a, there's a quote um, from Khalil Gibran in the book The Prophet that I really like. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And he says, the deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. And so, and he uses a couple analogies, like, um, you know, it's it, like a, a pot that's burned in the potter's oven. So it's the burning of the pot that actually gives it its shape and makes it useful. Or a lute that's hollowed out with knives. So the lute is, you know, cut, and it's the cutting process that actually allows it to have its shape and and makes it play beautiful music. And so it's this, you know, these kinds of analogies shed light on this idea that if you go deeper into your sorrow, it might actually help you find the source of your joy and your bliss in life. And um, I find this a little bit helpful for me. Uh, you know, it's, it, it hasn't been a huge deal, but there was a speaker I saw at a Hay House event years ago named Andrew Harvey who talked about this. And he was talk, giving a talk, I think, about sacred activism. And he was kind of slamming this idea I think he referred to it as a new age narcissism or something something along those lines about just like trying to be happy all the time and blissful but really ignoring the problems of the world then you know like just make money for yourself and law of attraction all the stuff you want abundance this and abundance that but ignore the world and I don't think that's really the right model of abundance and I see what he's getting at and if you come at it from the sorrow angle it gives you more of a sense of action like I've actually got a have a purpose here that does something for the world, that makes a difference, that helps people in some way. One of the things that really gets me is when I see people just, um, you know, living lives of, of just like lack of alignment all over the place, um, you know, doing a job they don't like and you just see in their eyes that there's just no spirit, there's no soul, there's no fire in, the, in them for what they're doing. Uh, the way they're living, they're just checked out, going through the motions, you know, like the saying, uh, lives of quiet desperation. And it's, you know, that always breaks my heart to see it. It tugs at me. Um, and it's one of the reasons I want to encourage people to live more consciously and to wake up and, and uh, you know, create an amazing life for yourself, um, especially a life centered around some kind of service to others. That creates more positive ripples in the world. Um, you know, what else breaks my heart? I mean, just the ridiculous amount of political infighting in this country, in the world, such a waste of resources, war, you know, destroying things that we've built. Um, and and uh, I'd say one of the things that touches my heart, you know, definitely more deeply than most is, is like animal cruelty, you know, seeing people eat animal products. Um, 
sometimes people, you know, because they know I'm a vegan, they ask me like, hey, if we go out to dinner and I eat meat in front of you, is that going to bother you? And I say, yeah, <laughs> it's true. It always bothers me. Um, because whenever I see like dead flesh on a plate, I think of the animal that probably suffered and died to, you know, to give that up and seem so unnecessary and all the huge waste of resources. Um, and, and just like, you know, like the, you know, just the absolute enormity of it. You know, like if you're a meat eater, you're using about 1.4 million gallons of water more a year than a vegan is. Um, I mean, that's a huge waste. <laughs> um, so that gets to me too. And I can get riled up thinking about that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I on the other hand, I still respect people's right to choose, but I also, um, you know, when I see somebody who's like tipping near vegan and wants to go that way, I like to encourage them to go. And over the years, I've encouraged hundreds of people to, to go and many of them have stuck with it permanently. So that's really cool to see. But it starts with the heartbreak aspect. It, it's, I'm not, a, you know, in that area, I'm not as motivated to encourage people so much on the health side as I am to like get them out of pain. Uh, especially when I see people like deep into depression and stuff and they're diet is just filled with um, these nasty animal products filled with you know toxicity and um, it's messing up their brains and their emotions and their thinking and it's messing up their social lives and you know the irony is people think often when you get healthier it's going to make your social life worse because you have fewer options but almost always it's the exact opposite that you become more you come you become more vibrant when you're healthier you feel more social um, so that's something that lights you know lights me up helping get people out of that out of that pain so the, the lesson here I'm not gonna you know go much more on this because it's actually a pretty simple lesson it's the lesson is just don't just look at the bliss side of life purpose but also go deeper into the pain side you know ask yourself what really um, tugs at your heartstrings what makes you sorrowful and if you go deeper into that sorrow and you explore it you might find that it contains the source of your joy of your purpose in life there have been you know many instances where somebody went through a deeply saddening experience like a tragic loss and through that they discovered a, a, an, an amazing sense of purpose like they had an accident or they lost a spouse or a partner to um, to some disease like cancer and then be, they become a spokesperson for that or their child died in a drunk driving accident and they speak out against that um, or they had a deep, you know, problem with drugs and alcohol and now they help people who are in that same situation. So pay some attention to the sorrow side uh, because it can be at least as rich as the joy side in looking for gold when you're trying to discover and embrace and start following a sense of deep meaning and purpose in your life. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>